Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add new attachments to Survival Game Kit V2. This video is for Unreal Engine 5 and for Survival Game Kit V2 versions that are 2.4 or newer. If you're using Unreal Engine 4 or if you're using an old version of Survival Game Kit V2, I'll have a video linked in the description that you can follow instead. So to get started, we're going to go to Survival Game Kit, Blueprints, and we're going to scroll down and find items then open up the attachment items folder. In here is where all of our attachment blueprints are. Now you wouldn't drag one of these into the level. Um, these are spawned specifically by the system uh, when we hold a weapon or equip a weapon. In this video, I'm gonna be adding a new site attachment, but you can still follow along with this video if you're adding say a stock or silencer, it doesn't matter. I'll be doing the site specific stuff towards the end of the video. So to get started, we're going to right click the master attachment and click create child blueprint class and we can name this whatever you want. I'm going to call mine BP underscore site like that and we'll open that up. I'm just going to drag this up here. So to start with, just double click any of your components to open up the viewport and in here we're going to add a new static mesh component. If you're using a skeletal mesh, you can add a skeletal mesh component instead. Then with that selected, I'm going to set the mesh that I want for my attachment. So for me, that's going to be the red dot like that Then compile. Then we're going to go to the class defaults and change some of these settings. So the first option is our attachment type. If you click the drop down, you'll see all of the different attachment types. This is how you control what type of attachment you're creating. So because I'm making a site, I'm going to select site. Then we've got the attach socket. So this is the socket name on your weapons skeleton that this attachment will attach to. So if I go to the M4 skeleton, I'm just gonna go to the survival game kit. So it's for M4A4 and we'll just scroll through and find the SK underscore M4A4, open that up. Here you can see that we've got all of our attachment sockets for uh, our weapon and I'm creating a site. So I'm gonna be using the site socket, but you may be using one of the other ones. Uh, if you're using your own uh, weapon skeleton and you don't have these sockets, you can always right click one of the bones, do add socket and then name the socket. But because I'm making a site, I'm gonna be using this uh, site socket. You need to make sure you copy the exact same name, otherwise it won't work. And we'll paste that into our attached socket like that. Now I'll be coming back into here later to set up the site specific settings, but I'll just cover some of the settings that come with the attachment blueprint. So start with, we've got the fire sound. This allows you to change the sound that your gun will use when it fires, when this attachment is added to it. And we've got the damage stat. So any values we set in here will be added to our weapon's current damage values. So if I was to add a new entry, open this up and set it to say head and put min damage one and max damage five, the minimum damage of our weapon when it hits a head will increase by one and on the minimum damage and increase by five on the maximum damage. You can also set negative values here. So if you wanted an attachment to decrease a weapon's damage, you could put negative values. Next, we've got the spread effect. So uh, this works in a similar way. If you uh, put a positive value here, it will increase the weapon's spread when this attachment is added to it. Or if you put a negative value, it will decrease the weapon's spread um, when this attachment's attached. And the same for the auto fire rate. This will only affect uh, weapons that have automatic fire. And if you put a higher value here, the weapon will fire faster. Then we've got the recoil effects and this works in the same way. If you wanted this attachment to decrease the recoil effect, you could put negative values in here. And if you wanted it to increase it, you'd put positive values. Then you've got the spread increase per shot. So um, each time you fire, the weapon spread increases. Here you can control how much the attachment affects that. So if you wanted it to make the weapon less accurate as the player fires, you'd put a positive value here and a negative if you wanted it to reduce the um, effect of firing. We also have an option here that allows you to add a new uh, fire mode to the weapon when this attachment is added to the weapon. So next we're going to create the item for our new attachment. So we'll go to the content browser and I'm just going to search for item list and open that up. And in here, I'm just gonna be duplicating the existing site item um, and just covering the attachment details. If you want more information about all of the different settings in here, there's a separate adding new items video that you can take a look at. So I'm just gonna search for red and I'm gonna select the red dot site and duplicate that item. I'm just gonna rename it, say a red dot site new, like that. Then I'm just gonna scroll down to the attachment details 
And in here, you're gonna to need to make sure that your item has is attachment ticked on, and then you can set the attachment class. So we're gonna change this to our new attachment blueprint. So for me, that's B underscore site. Here we can also set the attachment icon. So this is the icon that's used when our weapon is in an attachment slot. Then we've got some attach, detach, and swap animations. Uh, these are used by magazines, and I'll explain a little bit more about those later on in the video, so we'll come back to those. Next, we've got the can only remove slash add when the weapon is held. Um, so if this option is enabled, your player will not be able to um, add or remove this attachment unless they're holding the weapon. Then the rest of these settings are used for magazines, so I'll come back to those later on in the video. Uh, just a quick side note, if you want to change the mesh, that the um, item uses when it's dropped on the ground, uh, you would do that up here. Um, if you're setting a static mesh, you would put that here. And if you're using a skeleton mesh, you would set that here. Next, we're gonna go back to the content browser and we'll get rid of this search. And then we're gonna go blueprints, then items, then uh, world items. And in here, find either the static, um, static, we go static master item or skeletal master item this depends on if you're using a static mesh here or a skeletal mesh so i'm using a static mesh so i'm going to be using the static master item just right click it do create child blueprint class then here call it bp underscore um i'll call my new site underscore wi then uh, we'll get rid of this search i'm just going to search for new and open up our new site blueprint that we just created then in here, just go to the class defaults, find the item setting, and in the row name, we're gonna set this to the new row we just created. So I'm just gonna search for new, and mine is the attachment underscore red dot site new. And then you should see your mesh appear. So now we should be able to drag this blueprint into our level, and we should be able to see our item, um, and your character should be able to pick it up. Now if your character, when looking at the item in game, if the options don't show up to pick up the item, it's probably because your mesh does not uh, have collision. So um, if your mesh doesn't have collision, you'll need to find a mesh. So if I search for red dot, uh, I'm just gonna open up the mesh. Um, you can easily tell, uh, you can go to the collision, uh, sorry, not collision, go to show, then go tick on simple collision. You can see I've got this green box. That means my mesh has collision. If yours doesn't have that, then you can go to collision and then you can use these options to add uh, collision to your mesh. So now we've set up our attachment item, we need to tell our weapons that they are allowed to actually attach this item. So to do that, you'll need to go to your weapon mesh, um, weapon blueprint, sorry. So for that, I'm gonna go to blueprints, then to items, then to the holdable items, and in here is where we have all of our holdable blueprints. You'll need to go to your ranged weapon. So I'm just gonna be using the M4, but if you're doing this for other weapons, you would go to that one. So I'll open that up. And in the class defaults here, I'm gonna search for attachment. And in here is where we can control this weapon's attachment settings. So you can see we've got the allowed attachment setting here. And this is where we list all of the attachments that are allowed to be attached to our weapon. So you can see we've got the M4 uh, magazine, stock, red dot, and the silencer. So if I want to uh, add a new attachment that can be attached to this weapon, you just click the plus button here and then set the class. So mine was BP underscore site, uh, select that. And now our weapon is allowed to attach that new site. Here you can also set the weapon's default attachments. So these are the attachments that it will spawn with. If we click this, these drop down arrows, you can see that the weapon spawns with the stock and with the magazine. So if you did want your weapon to spawn with the item, you can click this add button, click this drop down, set this to master item list and then you would select your new attachment row. So if I search for new, I would select the attachment underscore red dot site new. Um, but I'm not gonna add that for this video, I'm just gonna remove that. Then once you've added your site to the allowed attachments, we can just compile this. Next, we need to go back to our attachments blueprint, so the BP site for me. And in here, we just need to change our mesh's collision. Um, this is something I forgot to do. So select your static mesh or skeletal mesh if you're using a skeletal mesh, and in here, scroll down and find the collision presets and change this to no collision. So once we've done that, we can compile and test this out in game. So I'm just gonna hit play, uh, run over and we'll grab our um, weapon and I'll grab the backpack as well. And I'll pick up our red dot and drag it onto our weapon. And you, s you should see your attachment on your weapon now. 
Um, if your attachment is in the wrong location or has the wrong rotation, you can do Shift F1 to release the mouse, go back to the uh, skeleton of your weapon, and you can move and rotate the socket to get your socket in the right position. Keep in mind though that if any other sites are using this site socket, um, if you move the socket, it will affect those as well. So if you wanted to have multiple sites with different sockets, you can always just add a new socket to the weapon and then uh, use the name of that socket uh, in your site attachment. That way you can have different sockets for different sites. So we'll go back and uh, just select the window so we can play in game again. I'm gonna hit V and you can see that um, we've got our site now, but if I aim, it's still using the standard weapons iron sights. So what we'll do now is set this up so we can adjust where the weapon goes when we ADS. So this is the part where I'll go through uh, site specific settings. If you're adding say a new um, muzzle or stock, you can probably just stop watching the video here. This next part is just gonna be for sites. So the first thing we'll do is do Shift F1 to release our mouse. Then we're going to go to the character's skeleton. So for me, that's going to be the uh, if we go to survival game kit, then to meshes, skeletal, and find the SK underscore mannequin. Open that up. If you're using a custom skeleton, you will need to go to that skeleton. Then we're going to search for hand, and we're going to select the right hand IK. I'm just going to pull this window out and move it sort of down to the corner here so we can see it while we're playing. So something like that. Then we're going to go back to the content browser and in here go to survival game kit. We want to open up the M4 anims layer. So go to animations, layer, then find the M4, A4 anim layers. Open that up. Uh, I'm just going to drag this up to the top here. Then go to your class defaults. And because we're editing the first person, I'm going to scroll down and find the first person settings. So down here, open up hand IKs, then open up first person aimed right hand IKs. And I'm going to copy the location and I'm going to paste that location onto our right hand IK. So paste that onto relative location and then do the same thing for rotation, paste that onto relative rotation like that. Then in our anim layers, we're just going to scroll up and turn on adjust right hand IK like that. Then we'll go back to the showcase and in here now we can move the socket in our weapon to actually change the location of our weapon. So something I recommend is just make this window a bit smaller. Uh, like that and tick on this option here. This allows you to use world co coordinates for your widget. So if we select that, it will just make moving around the weapon a bit easier. So if we select W, we can move this around now and you can see as I move the socket, it actually updates our weapon. Um, a couple of things, make that make this window a little bit bigger. Um, I'm gonna turn off grid snapping just so we can get smoother movement. Um, but little tip as well is the closer your camera is to this widget, um, the smoother the movement will be. So you can make finer um, adjustments. So I'm just gonna try and get the camera a bit closer. And you can see that now I can make more uh, fine tune adjustments and we can just use this to position our weapon so that our red dot um, lines up the center of our screen. Uh, you can also uh, rotate this as well and it will rotate the weapon, um, but this position I'm happy with. So what I'm gonna do is just make this window a bit bigger going to copy the relative location, so copy that, then go back to your uh, weapons attachment blueprint, then in class defaults, uh, we're going to need to paste this into this option here. So um, before we can do that, we'll just exit out of uh, play and editor. Then in the, uh, where's the saying gone? In the ADS camera transforms, click the add button. Then here we're going to set our weapons skeletal mesh, so M4A4. Then uh, we'll expand the drop down here. I'm going to paste the location in here and copy the rotation and paste that into rotation like that. And this tells the attachment that when it's attached to this weapon and we aim, we want to use these values. You also need to tick on this option here to make sure that the site does use these settings that we've just set up. Now we can test this out, but the first thing we need to do is untick uh, in our weapons anim layers. Make sure that you untick adjust right hand IK. So you want to make sure that these are always off unless you're actively adjusting the hand IKs. So now we'll test this out. I'm just going to hit play and we'll run over and quickly grab our weapon. So I'll hold that, uh, equip our backpack and pick up our sight. We'll attach this to our weapon. And now when I go into first person and I aim, you'll see that we're now using that location that we just set up when we aim. And if we uh, detach our weapons attachment, and aim again, it will use our standard weapons ADS location. 
So that's pretty much it for setting up your site and getting the aiming all working. In the next part, I'll just explain a few settings about the uh, magazine attachments. So I'll just exit out of this and uh, close our skeleton here. Now, um, the way that SGK is set up and the way that most games work is when you uh, reload your weapon, the weapon mesh and the character mesh both play an animation at the same time that is usually made together in a 3D modeling program. And this gives the impression that the magazine is attached to the character's hand. Most of the time, this isn't the case. It's just two animations playing at the same time. So the way that SGK is set up is that you have reload uh, animations for your character and then reload animations for your weapon mesh. And those, um, the weapon mesh will animate the magazine bone, which moves the magazine. And usually then your character is also moving their hand in line with that magazine. So if we go to the item list here and we find uh, the attachment settings, uh, here is where we can set our animations for our character. So if we just quickly look up our magazine and select say the M4 magazine, and here you'll see that we have attach, detach and swap animations for our character. Now the way these work is they have notifies in the animations and they tell the system when we should attach the magazine to the weapon skeleton and also when we should destroy that magazine when we remove it. So if we open up this montage here, first thing uh, you're going to need to do if you're changing or using your own attach and detach animations is the montage slot needs to be the upper body post AO. So you wanna make sure that that's set in here. So if uh, you would go to here and go to slot name, you would select this option here. Then if we select the animation and just uh, click this option to find it in the content browser and then open that up, you can see that in the actual animation we've got notifies that spawn the magazine and also attach it to the weapon skeleton. So again, if you are creating your own animations for uh, reloading, you would need to make sure that these are set up in your attach animation. Then if we take a look at the detach animation, so I'm just going to open up the detach montage, you can see it uses the same group as our attach montage. If we select the animation, go to the content browser and open that up. And here you'll see that it's got different notifies. Um, you will need to make sure that if you are using your own animation, you have these notifies added. Then in the item list, if we go back, we've got the swap montage. And if you open up this, all this is is a duplicate of the detach montage, but it's had its blend out time set to zero. And this is important if you're setting up a custom animation uh, your swap montage will be the same montage group and it's just your uh, detach animation but it has its blend out time set to zero then heading back to the item list if we scroll down you can see that we've got the attach weapon animations and the detach weapon animations so this is where you would set your weapon specific animations uh, these animations don't need any notifies in them and here you can also set a weapon skeleton so for example say this magazine could um, attach to multiple different weapons, um, you'll probably have multiple different uh, weapon animations. So if you wanted to, you could add a new entry here, say um, P1911, and then you could set the animation to use when um, we're attaching this, this attachment uh, to a P1911. In here, you can also set up uh, first person attach and detach animations if you wanted to. Then uh, for magazine attachments, in your magazine attachment blueprint, you want to go to the class defaults and in here you want to find the attach when unhidden option. You'll probably want this to be turned on and what this will basically do is attach the magazine directly to the weapon um, as soon as it spawns. So those are essentially the steps for setting up uh, magazines and magazine animations. Um, one other setting I did forget to mention is in here we can adjust the FOV. So if you want your site to affect the FOV, um, so that when you're aiming, uh, you can just enable this option here and you can change the first and third person FOVs for when your attachment is added to a weapon. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys found this information useful and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment.